Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite quarterback hater, Robert Mathis, and you're listening to the For the Culture Podcast. This is the For the Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Spears. Man, what a week for the Indianapolis Colts. Didn't play a game, but a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts. Start with the retirement of Anthony Costanzo, our longtime pillar left tackle. Then you go to the retirement of Phillip Rivers, our, our quarterback who led us to the playoffs in 2020. So those are two spots we obviously have to fill going forward. And then the kind of the shocker of the offseason so far to me, Nick Sirianni being hired by the Philadelphia Eagles as their head coach. Not that I don't like Nick Sirianni as a coach. I think he's an outstanding offensive mind. Um, I think he's going to be very good at what he does. I just wasn't sure he was quite ready for this. But, hey, he's got a lot going for him. He's been around a lot of good coaches. So uh, we wish him the best from For the Culture to Nick Sirianni and thank him for what he's done over the three years. I mean, he's really done an outstanding job along with the offensive other offensive coaches of putting together pretty solid offenses here in Indianapolis. So we wish him the best in Philly, you know, as long as he's not, they're not playing us, you know, we'll always kind of root for our guys. So now Marcus Brady, who was the quarterback coach will take over for Nick. And I thought maybe they would go with Mike Groh, but Brady being the quarterback coach just seemed like a more upward move. And he's got a lot of fans in that organization. So you know, Brady moves up to the OC. Not sure who the quarterback coach is going to be now. It could be, I mean, it could be Frank Reich for all we know, you know, head coach and quarterback coach, but probably not. It could be Marcus Brady, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, or they could go outside the organization. I know uh, Frank Reich really likes Press Taylor, who was on the staff in Philadelphia when he was there. That would be an interesting option to bring in to be the quarterback coach for our Colts. Uh, But I'm not sure what's going to happen. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot up in the air. But based on what I know here, this this is what I think is going to happen. I believe that Jonathan Gannon, our secondary DB coach, is going to leave Indianapolis and sign to be the Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator. He will call defensive plays there. I think he's as good as gone. Now, these things can change, but that's what I've heard. So Gannon, I think, is going to end up with Philadelphia. Nothing is ever a done deal until the contract is signed, as we found out with Josh McDaniels, who, huh, man, I've heard some stories about what's going on this offseason with him, and you, you know, you would laugh. Um, well, I'll just tell you the story. The story I heard was McDaniels was, a, was about to be offered the job or was offered the job in a handshake agreement to Philadelphia, and then they flipped and hired Sirianni. That's what I've heard happened. I'm not sure it's been reported anywhere. That's the rumor that I've heard. You could take it or leave it. But if that happened, man, that's that's what you call karma. Uh, and it all everything kind of comes full circle with that guy. And uh, the Eagles dodged a bullet because I would 100% rather have Nick Sirianni as my head coach than Josh McDaniels. So uh, moving on to, to Matt Eberflus. And this is... You know, obviously, you guys know I'm, I'm a huge flu guy, and I, I, I just don't have words for what the Houston Texans are doing right now. They've put the Colts in such a difficult position because in the beginning, it looked like Flus was going to get that job, and they were going to just keep Gannon. But then Sirianni gets hired, and he's he wants to bring gannon with him to be his defensive coordinator so now the colts are caught in a rock between a rock and a hard place because gannon's gone now he's gonna he's going to sign with the eagles and they don't know what's going on with flus because the the texans organization is such a burning trash can that they're still stringing him along now what i know about flus is he wasn't initially interested in the job but when they hired casario i think he he you know i'm sure he talked to the guy and was was probably led to believe that Easterby was not going to be a major part of football operations and wouldn't be an issue for Flus. But if you've watched the internet the last 24 hours, you know that the the Texans are now interviewing Josh McCown. Now, let me break this down for you. Josh McCown was on the Texans roster, okay, in 2020 as a backup quarterback. And... 
He knows Jack Easterby. He's friends with Jack Easterby. This is a Jack Easterby move right here. So what that tells me is Jack Easterby still is in the ear of Kyle McNair, which means Jack Easterby is still a big part of the problem in Houston and is, is throwing a wrench into their hiring process. Um, I'm sure there's some sort of power struggle going on between Casario and Jack Easterby, but Jack Easterby is a guy that's just no, he's very, he's not liked, and 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 I'm being very, <laughs> that's putting it very lightly. He is not liked in that locker room. Uh, he's the team chaplain. A team chaplain should never have this much say so or this much pull in an organization. And that I'm not saying anything bad about religion or anything like that, but in the hierarchy of an organization, the team chaplain is just that, the team chaplain. So the fact that this man is now getting guys that have never coached, the only coaching, by the way, that Josh McGowan has done was in 2012, he was a volunteer coach for a high school team in North Carolina. The fact he's getting an interview is is ridiculous, and I mean that on, on every level. There's so many more qualified coaches, black, white, whatever. It doesn't matter. This is a slap in the face to all of them. And I was telling Luke off air before, if I have my name in that job, like I know because what I know is it was down to Flus and Leslie Frazier. Those were the two guys. It was They were going to bring in a defensive guy. They were going to keep Tim Kelly as their offensive coordinator because Tim Kelly is a guy that Deshaun Watson loves. Tim Kelly did a good job with Deshaun Watson, and they blocked Tim Kelly. Houston being the Texans have blocked him from from interviewing for any other offensive coordinator job. So he is going to be there. But then suddenly they just completely shift gears, and now they're now they're now they're interviewing Josh McCown. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, I would literally hire anyone over those guys. But back to my point: if I was one of these guys that the, like Frazier, Bienemy, Flus. Any of these guys. As soon as I saw that yesterday, I mean, I would have probably not wanted the job to begin with. This is just me speaking. But if I did, and I saw what I saw yesterday when they they announced that the the Houston Texans Twitter page announced that they were, you know, conducting interviews, a second interview with Caldwell, and another interview in an interview with McCown. As soon as I saw McCown, I would I would have called Casario and been like, "Listen, the last week has shown me what this organization is." I'm not interested. And I would have just walked away. And for Flus, who is the guy that we're, we're, we're concerned about, I really hope he doesn't take this job because he'll be fired in probably less than three years. And he's too good a coach for this bullshit. He's too good a coach for it. He doesn't deserve this. He's been in the league 30 years or been coaching for 30 years uh, at high Division One defensive coordinator in Missouri. Then he coached his way up in the NFL ranks from – you know, Cleveland to Dallas to, to Indy to become a D.C. He's gone about it the right way. We're talking damn near 30 years coaching. So the fact that this idiot is actually being interviewed is ridiculous in a slap in the face to be in. I mean, and I'm not a – listen, straight up, I'll tell you right now, I don't think the enemy is going to be a good coach. I, I've heard a lot of negative things about him as far as just the way he comes across and things from his past and all that. But even him – he has a resume that says, "Okay, I've I've coached in this league. I've had success in this league." That's a I, I would hire. I mean, so I like it's a slap in the face to all of them. Frazier, the enemy, Flus, all of them. I would pull out. I'd pull out and make them hire Josh McCown. Yeah, live with that. Live with that and see how long, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson wants to be there. So what I know right now on Saturday is that Houston has no idea what they're doing. They're they're drag. They drug their feet on on Flus. And Leslie Frazier, I thought at first they were waiting for Leslie Frazier to, you know, finish his season before announcing him. But you can announce it or you can leak it before. I mean, they did that, the Saints or whoever did that with Dan Campbell to the Lions. So I'm not sure what Houston is doing, but they're doing it wrong. Houston is the, right now, Houston is the worst organization in football. Period. Bar none. And it's all basically linked to one guy they refuse to get rid of. And it makes me sick that, you know, Flus could have gone there. If this guy, Easterby, wasn't there, Flus would have been the coach of the Texans. A hundred percent. There's no doubt in my mind. And, you know, I, I want him to succeed because I love him as a coach, and I think he deserves that opportunity. But if the opportunity is coming back 
to the Colts and being a DC for another year or taking a train wreck job where you're basically, you're going to, it's just a, it's just a clock to be fired within three years. Then I hope he comes back to the Colts. But my point, you know, when I started talking about all this is the whole situation puts the Colts in a, in a vulnerable spot because let's just say somehow Houston hires, Gannon goes to Philly, Houston hires Flus. Where, where do we go for a DC? And, Look, the only guy on the staff that I would even interview that I think could even do it is 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 Alan Williams, and I'm not a huge fan of him. He was a coordinator for for Minnesota for two years. He he had one decent year and a really bad year, and then he was fired. I think they go outside. They they I think they would have to go outside the current staff to find their next coach. I've seen a lot of Borgonzi mentions. He's not ready, based on what I've heard and know. He's not ready, so he's not going to be the guy. So it's and I know Ballard and Reich are scrambling trying to figure out what they're going to do because they're in the middle of a situation where okay Gannon's gone and Flus is still here, but you never know what Houston's going to do. You know they might wake up Sunday and say okay well let's just hire Flus, and then where are the Colts? And they've got to go out and you know hire somebody else, bring them in. Then you've got all these staff issues. You got a new secondary coach. And, and, you know, it's just there's so many things going on and so many moving parts. Hopefully, and it's very a very stressful time of year for a lot of people. I mean, you don't think about this, but, like, just the families of coaches, you know, like Gannon. And, I mean, so, so the point is that this needs to be rectified quickly. And with, with the way Houston is doing business right now, I think it's a disservice to the NFL. It's a disgrace. And it's affecting us. It really is. People are probably gonna be like, "Why are you doing a, a show? Or why are you do? Why is Jason doing this, you know, podcast by himself about, you know, Houston?" I'm frustrated uh, for Flus, uh, and I just think it's just disrespectful and the disgraceful the way Houston is hired, gone about their hiring process. It's taking forever. It shouldn't be taking this long. Um, they should have identified the guys that they want. They're clearly still talking to other guys. And all this does is push the schedule back. So we're going to have to, you know, whatever, whatever happens, we're going to have to, you know, prepare for the senior bowl and do all the things that you have to do with kind of a lot of moving parts. I think we're definitely at the very least going to have to hire another secondary coach. God forbid we lose Flus. not only <laughs> secondary coach, DC. I mean, it's just... It's not a good spot for the Colts to be in, and it's not their doing. It's not their doing at all. So I am 99% sure Jonathan Gannon is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator next year. Again, we know, as we've seen, anything can happen. So there's a chance that, you know, somehow Gannon doesn't sign and somebody else comes in and signs or whatever. But the rumor I've heard is he's been offered the job. He just hasn't signed yet. So, um, and I think that's going to happen in the next couple of days. So we'll see what happens. But I wanted to give you guys kind of the insight that I have. I really hope Flus doesn't take the Houston job if he if he gets offered it. I hope he I hope he walks away or whatever. Even though he already did that once, and I don't think he'll do it again. But that's just not a job that I that I I don't think anyone can succeed there. I really don't. So give it to Josh McCown if you really want to. Because I don't think the enemy can succeed there. I don't think, I don't think flu. I just don't. I, it's because my theory on anything, whether it's a corporation or you know the government or or a sports team, is shit rolls downhill. So if it's rotten at the top, where Cal McNair and Easterby are, because Easterby's basically in Cal McNair's ear, then it that just trickles down and just creates a completely dysfunctional organization. And I know guys want to be coaches and head coaches. But at some point, you have to weigh the risk versus the reward. What is really the reward in that job? Is there, is there one? I don't think so. So we'll see what happens. I expect in the next seven days, this will be all this will be determined, and we can get we can get moving on with the business of the off season and getting into players and free agents and all that stuff. But this is something that's been weighing on my mind the last couple of days. I've been seeing ridiculous tweet tweets. I saw one from Ben Volin from. Uh, Boston saying Flus is a viable candidate for the Houston job. Hey Ben, no shit. He's been a viable candidate for three weeks. He was the he was the candidate that Corn Ferry wanted to hire. He was the guy that they said wanted you know that they wanted to hire. But then they fired Corn Ferry 
And, you know, so they went another route, and now it's Leslie Frazier, Eric Bieniemy, Fluce, and now McNown and, and, and Caldwell. It's just, it's just a, it is absolutely a burning trash can of epic proportions down there. So I, I don't know what to say. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you an update on what I've heard and where I think this is going to go. I'm kind of 50-50, man. Houston, I, I, I can't give you a real good number on who I think they're going to hire because they're so unpredictable because I don't think Casario really is running shit there. I think it's the Easter being Cal McNair. And so for all we know, it could be, it could be McCown. It could be Caldwell. It could be anybody. I thought it was going to be Leslie Frazier a week ago. Now I have no idea. So I'd say the odds of Flus coming back, maybe 60, 40 comes back, but you just never know. So Anyway, guys, I just wanted to drop this pod and, and, and you know give you my thoughts on everything going on. Fluce has definitely been a viable candidate. Houston's Houston has been on or he's been on Houston's radar since the end of the year. Since hell, since the, before the season ended. And so the fact that this has turned into this clown show is just a just appalling. I feel bad for Deshaun Watson. I honestly think if they keep that Easterby guy there, Deshaun Watson will never play another down for the Houston Texans. That's that's a bold prediction, but I think that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens. But I wanted to do this real quick and get this out. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely, Luke and I will be back together doing something on uh, pro- maybe a review of the season, maybe, you know, a look at our in-house free agent, something this week, you know, after all this stuff. And we'll probably do one on, on what happens with Flus in the coaching staff or whatever. But as far as we stand now, we're still kind of caught in between. And obviously Chris Ballard's got a plan. He's I'm sure going through like coordinators that if flu sleeves that he'll, that he'll want to try to talk to. But the thing I would tell everybody is Frank Reich's the guy that's going to hire this defensive coordinator because Ballard hired the first one. Reich is hiring this one. So I'm, so I'm sure Reich and Ballard are working through it, but ultimately it's going to be Reich's decision on who the DC is going to be if Luce leaves for, for Houston. So uh, we'll see what happens. Lots of stuff going on bes- behind the scenes, a lot of moving parts. But I appreciate you guys listening. Hope this wasn't too long. Hope you're all doing well. Definitely miss, uh, haven't been on in a while, so I miss talking to you guys and, and being on the show. But I'll be back on more. We've had some technical stuff that have gone on, and uh, it's made it a little more difficult for us to do our shows together. But we'll get it figured out. And uh, we'll get it. We'll get it crank. We'll start cranking out stuff for the off season. I'm already digging into the draft, so you don't have to worry about that. That's going to be on point again this year. So, uh, big things coming for for the culture as far as interviews. And you know, we had the Antoine Bethea interview, which Luke knocked out of the park. And there's going to be some other ones, some from this current team uh, that you will be surprised by coming down the pike. So, you know, just hang in there, stick around. If you're not subscribed, man, s- subscribe because you're going to get stuff on this. Sh- on our show that you're not going to get anywhere else, whether that be an interview from Reggie Wayne, Antoine Bethea after he retires, you know, things like that. Um, Robert Mathis, Frank Reich, Matt Eberflus. I mean, we, we have so many interviews, and then we do the Q&As, and all. you guys know. And, and we're just going to keep doing it. We're going to keep grinding, and we're going to keep putting out good content. So uh, that wraps it up for me. So look forward to some new videos coming this week. Um, hope you guys enjoy Championship Weekend. I'm definitely rooting for the Bills and the Packers, and hopefully I would love to see the Bills win the Super Bowl. Uh, That's who I'm rolling with. So hope you guys enjoy the last weekend before the Super Bowl and the championship games, and we will talk to you soon here on the For the Culture Podcast.